Sitting at a stoplight, revving it up, pop the clutch and you're off. Wow, shifting through the gears and flying. Gotta love it. Nothing better than a manual transmission. But with it, well, comes a lot of movement. You can see everything down there from the flywheel going through all the gears to the output shaft. Welcome to this AMS oil tech tip. It's all about the manual transmission. Where do we start? Well, right here at the input shaft. Now the input shaft comes in and then there's all your gears. The power's gonna go through the counter and then the synchronizer is gonna lock and then what happens, it goes to the output shaft. I can show you all the different gears. Here's first gear right here. Now, first gear, you're coming in through the input shaft, you're coming down to the counter shaft, that's always moving, and then depending on the synchronizer, you can see it's over here locking this gear to the shaft. That's first gear, small gear, driving a big gear. Torque multiplication, first gear. Now, second gear, once again, the input's coming through, and then I go through almost two gears the same size, maybe that one's a little bit bigger, so I'm starting to lose torque and get some speed, but notice the synchronizer's locking that gear to the shaft. Second gear. Third gear, once again, power coming in through the actual input shaft. It's locked directly to the output shaft. There's direct drive, one to one. You're coming in and going out. And reverse, we just throw another gear in the mix and the output shaft goes backwards. That's cool, but I have it for you right here on the table in action. Check this out. I just said it comes in through the input shaft. So the synchronizer's in the middle, nothing's going on. So what happens if I lock that gear in, now I'm coming in, down, up and you can see the output shaft is now turning with the input shaft because it's locked with the synchronizer. Now there's a lot going inside these manual transmissions and there's a lot of problems like leaks, gear problem, noisy teeth, and shift forks. Len, and there's a lot going on inside of there. Yeah, and it all needs lubrication. Especially these synchronizers, a lot of people don't know, they have to bring these gears up to speed. So when I'm moving over, man, they're actually causing some friction in there. Right, it acts kind of like a clutch and there's some frictional characteristics. So when you're building a gear lube, you've got to really watch what you're doing because there's so many things going on. Just the chopping action of those gears meshing together will tend to chop the oil at a molecular level and it tends to thin out, which can compromise protection. The synchronizers you mentioned, that acts like a clutch. We need to deal with the frictional characteristics. It can't be too slippery, it can't be too grippy. So you have a nice smooth shift. All of that can be affected by the oil. Heat is also a key factor here as well. So the oil needs to be extremely robust, additized properly to be able to protect that transmission and give you, you know, flawless performance. Now the synchronizers themselves, now they're brass and there's some problems with the fluid as well if you don't have a good fluid. At, at certain temperatures, gear lubes can develop an appetite for yellow metal, right? Unless you formulate for that, which we do. So heat doesn't necessarily become a problem with our transmission fluids. And that's awesome. Just go to amsoil.com. If you have a vehicle with a manual transmission or an automatic transmission, it doesn't matter what you drive, they have a product for you.